What's up guys, I'm C5 from the Beefy Smash Dudes and Nintendo doesn't like spam. They even put a mechanic into every Smash title that directly weakens moves that someone hits a lot. It's called stale move negation or just staling and in this video I will explain exactly what it does and how it works in Smash 4. Every time you hit your opponent with a move, that move will go on a hidden queue or list implemented in the game. This can happen more than once and every time it does, that move becomes a tiny bit weaker. This staleness queue contains 9 spots, so the last 9 moves you hit are saved on it. If you hit another move, the first one added gets out of the queue and this process repeats itself every time you hit a move. Let's make a quick example. Sheik over here starts with a forward throw into two forward airs, re-grabs and forward throws again, followed by a bouncing fish. Then she hits needles, two f-tilts and another forward air. Now let's look at it step by step. The game starts, so there are no moves stale yet. They are completely fresh, that's what they are called if they are not stale. So the forward throw deals full damage and knockback, as well as the first forward air but both get added to the staleness queue. Now the second fair is a bit weaker than the first one because it is already in the queue once, but only by a tiny bit, probably less than a full percent. Regrab and F throw again. Same goes for this move, a bit weaker because already in the queue. I think you get the idea. The last fair in this scenario is even weaker than the second one because this time it is already two times in the staleness queue. Now that the queue is full, the next move that Sheik hits will also be added but remove the first forward throw from it since it's the oldest move in the queue and there are only 9 spots in it. Therefore the forward throw will be less stale and a bit stronger again next time Sheik uses it. These very small adjustments can seem insignificant but in certain scenarios it can make a big difference. Let's stay with Sheik as example. She's a character that often relies heavily on her forward air because it's so ridiculously good. So a lot of times it is 4 or 5 times in the queue, which means that instead of 5% it only deals 3 or even 2%. And if she hits 10 stale fares in a stock, it adds up to 20 or 30% less damage than without staling. This is a huge difference. Staleness is also a factor when it comes to killing power. Not only the damage, but also the knockback of stale moves get reduced. If Little Meg, for example, uses a lot of down smash and forward smash, but never an up smash, the up smash will become a much stronger kill option. As bad news as this sounds, staleness can be used to your advantage if you know how. Reduced knockback means more combo potential. Most throw to aerial combos stop connecting before the opponent reaches kill percents. But the more stale a certain throw is, the higher is the chance that it can connect with a fatal aerial. So if Sheik over here uses more down throw instead of forward throw, it will have less knockback and connect even longer with the up air follow up. So now that you know how staleness works, how can you use this information for yourself? First, try to implement many different moves in your gameplay. Mix it up instead of only using one or two moves or you will feel how they become stale and how hard it is to wrap up damage. Also, avoid using strong kill moves when they have no chance of actually killing yet. They will just get weaker and you will have a harder time killing with them when it really matters. And I know that sometimes it seems like a smash is the best option for a punish because your opponent has lag and it deals the most damage. But sometimes you can get the same amount of percent or even more by performing a small combo of weaker moves without staling your strong hits. By the way, in the training mode moves don't get stale at all. Now let's go over some more details about staling. Moves don't get stale just by performing them. You have to hit an enemy for them to become stale. Also, moves do not become stale if you hit shields, invincible opponents, counters, or if they clash with projectiles or other moves. But they do become stale if you hit someone who has super or heavy armor. 
Hitting multiple targets with a single move will only stale the move once. The same goes for multi-hit moves. No matter how often it hits, if it's performed once, it only takes one spot in the staleness queue. I just said that you have to hit an enemy for an attack to become stale. But there are actually a few other things too that will stale your moves if you hit them. That is, the ducks from the duck hunt stage, the balloons from Smashville and Town and City, the statues from Castle Siege, Warrior's Bike, Wifi Trainer's Ball, Rob's Gyro, Pac-Man's Fruits, Pac-Man's little food ball he eats at his side B, Link's and Toon Link's Bombs, Bowser Jr.'s Mini Cooper, Sheik's Grenade, and the object from Greninja's counter. Also, Luma will steal your moves too, even if you don't hit Rosalina. The following things will not steal your moves if you hit them. Villagers Tree, Balloons and Rocket. Olimar's Pikmin. Zelda's Knight. Link's and Toon Link's Hylian Shield. Pit and Dark Pit's Reflector. Duck Hunt Dog's Can, Cowboys or Frisbee. King Dedede's Gordo. And Pac-Man's Hydrant. Well, looks like you just learned some more unnecessary information, right? But don't worry, this too can be a bit useful knowledge. For example, could you avoid hitting Warrior's bike with smashes to not weaken them? Or the statues on Castle Siege, assuming you are playing with an outdated rule set. <clears throat> These objects can actually even help you achieve the opposite of staleness. You can unstale your more important moves by hitting stuff like Balloons on Smashville or Ducks on Duck Hunt with less important moves. Like I said, the queue always refreshes and the oldest moves on it get removed. So if you fill the queue with weak moves, your strong moves will leave it and automatically become a little stronger again. Also, you now know that you don't have to worry about staling your moves when destroying Villager's Tree or Olimar's Pikmin. There are a few moves that don't become stale at all. First, projectiles that can be thrown like items, like Link's bombs or Peach's turnips. Even projectiles that are not thrown in the beginning but can be caught in mid-air, like Diddy's nuts or Pac-Man's fruits, won't become stale, so they always deal the same amount of damage. Also, a normal projectile only gets stale in the moment it hits someone. If it gets reflected, it won't become stale. Damaging yourself with moves will also not stale them, like with Mega Man's Sticky Bomb or Duck Hunt Dog's Can. Reflectors don't become stale either, and by that I mean their ability to reflect doesn't get weaker, although the damage itself a reflector might deal does become stale. And last but definitely not least, taunts. They too never become stale, so even if it's not a lot, their damage will always stay the same. I know staleness is a bit complicated at the beginning, but I also think that it's pretty interesting. So thanks for watching all the way to the end, subscribe for more Smash videos, see you soon and as always, stay beefy.